I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're here with you for the next half hour to rattle through the headlines, chattering insanely like two lunatics in an attic. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. That's us, isn't it? Two, uh, yeah, lun basically. two lunatics We're, in an attic. We'll be in about two weeks' time. Right, OK, <laughs> we'll stick with the two lunatics in the attic here uh, for the next 30 thrilling minutes as Ooh. we throttle through all the big headlines. Now, first of all, over in the Middle East, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, has reiterated his vow to invade the Gaza city of Rafa in southern Gaza, and he says there is a date. A lot of people pouring scorn on, on this, saying he's just sabre-rattling and he oh. won't do mm. this. Uh, but there are still significant numbers of Hamas warriors mm. uh, in Rafa. And uh, if he is to fulfil his mission to destroy Hamas completely, a bit of a long shot, to say the least, uh, he has to go into Rafa. So uh, I guess uh, we await uh, with uh, great tension as to yeah. what, what he's going to do. I mean, he's done the same as he's done before, which is basically saying we're going to give the date so civilians can evacuate in the hope that actually all the wrongans stay underground in their tunnels and be extricated and dealt with. Uh, but Rafa has become home to 1.4 million refugees who have already fled their particular parts of Gaza to go and seek shelter there. So... Uh, uh, very difficult for all of the civilians involved. We, you know, we almost yeah. always must remember that. But again, he said, I'm going to destroy Hamas. And Hamas insist on keeping those hostages. They use people as human shields. And what else can he do? If he doesn't deal with this problem, the terrorist organisation is just going to regrow uh, like a cancer and the attacks won't stop. As you say, Alex, uh, one of the problems with Rafa, it is one of the sheltered areas, or it is the sheltered areas, where Palestinians can go uh, and, uh, as of now, be spared bombing and uh, uh, the IDF and everything like that. It's a safe area. So if... Uh, the idea for the Israeli army go in there to uh, seek out Hamas. Uh, it's bound to cause all sorts of uh, problems. Uh, those peace talks uh, between yeah. Hamas and Israel uh, down in Cairo uh, are not going well. Not at and all. Uh, Hamas said uh, uh, there is no change in the position of the occupation and therefore there is nothing new in the Cairo talks. That means, in other words, uh, Hamas are calling for Israel to pull out of Gaza. But of course, Israel, quite reasonably, in my view, said we're not doing anything uh, yeah. until you give us back our hostages. Right. Exactly. Hamas just want Israel to stop the war on their terms. And I don't see how Israel could have remotely agree to that. There are protests underway in Israel demanding those hostages get returned, which Netanyahu, that must be his primary concern. Of course it is. What's interesting about these talks, though, is you don't actually get Israel or Hamas in the same room. Even when there's a delegation from America, they're not in the same room as Hamas either. Hamas will just sit and talk to only the Qataris, who then have to run and say with the translation to Israel and America, this is what's said in the talks. That then goes back to the Hamas representative in a different room. Then they have to somehow get that information to Mr Chief Hamas somewhere in a tunnel, surrounding himself with the human shield of Israeli hostages. And so all these talks are a very convoluted system. They're not sitting around, you know, breaking bread and having mineral water poured into little glasses and hand wringing in a nice boardroom. <laughs> not like that at all, one imagines. Uh, no. Uh, so uh, we uh, will await to see what uh, Netanyahu does. Uh, uh, now, I always have a little game with Netanyahu, Benjamin, uh, the Prime Minister of Israel. Uh, every time you see a little footage of him talking, will he be speaking English or will he not? Uh, I think on this one, he's not speaking English, but we will translate for you. But take it really? away. You've got good uh, I'll, I'll, do it as, I'll do it as we go along. This is you, Dublin. Leave it, leave it to me. I'm multilingual. <laughs> uh, I speak rubbish and Polyglot. English. Uh, so uh, take it away, Mr. Netanyahu. <laughs> ובראשם 
שחרור כל חטופינו והשגת ניצחון מוחלט על חמאס. הניצחון הזה מחייב כניסה לרפיח וחיסול גדודי הטרור שם. זה יקרה, יש תאריך. Well, for those listening on the radio, I'm sure that made perfect sense. Yeah, that should, should, should have uh, translated as you go along, but I could barely read well, it. Well, uh, I was waiting for you to do anyway, it. I haven't got my glasses anyway, on. Anyway, he said everything the, uh, he just said, that, that he will, date, or, or Israel yeah. will be invading uh, Rafa, and uh, he will, they will not stop the conflict unless... Uh, Hamas releases the hostages. There's supposed to be about 130 left, but uh, there are fears that as fewer than 50 are still alive. Mm. It is pretty grim down in those, uh, those tunnels beneath Gaza. So uh, we pray for them and uh, we pray for their release. Uh, now, uh, let's move on. A big situation unfolding mm, up in Bradford. Another manhunt. This manhunt. Another man who's attacked an, a woman. Yeah, well, this is, like, is called ha Haliba, Haliba Masoom. Uh, is wandering on Habiba. suspicion. Uh, uh, Habiba. Yeah, yeah Habiba. No, we almost got him halibuts then, like the yeah. fish. Haliba, yeah, Habiba. Habiba. Uh, he's wanted on suspicion of murdering 27-year-old Carl Summer, actor, uh, who turns out to have been his partner. Uh, looks like uh, he's the father of that child that had to sit there in the pushchair while he was murdering the poor kid's mother. Uh, the kid Stamped is all right, by multiple the way. Times. Uh, now, he's gone on the run. Now, the thing about this is, uh, back in November, he was charged with assault and mm. threatening Miss Akhtar. Uh, so there's, they've clearly got a very volatile relationship. But anyway, so he went into court and they bailed him. So this guy was on bail uh, after being charged with serious violent offences mm. against the woman that when he was released on bail, he went on to kill. So I'm... the police have got a lot of questions oh, to ask Oh, oh, not just that, Kev. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Old Habiba, according to the BBC, is from Oldham, but actually, plot twist, He's not. He was over here on a student's visa from Bangladesh, from Bangladesh yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of years, actually. So why wasn't he deported, let alone arrested and then bailed? Why wasn't he sent home yet again? Another one here who should have been deported. Now a woman is dead as a result of that action not being taken. At what point are people going to start suing the Home Office for recklessness? I totally uh, take your point. The one thing I would say is you've got to be convicted of the crime before you're deported. Uh, so he was only charged with these uh, offences back in November. But it's quite clear. I mean, when you get charged with offences in court, you are either remanded in custody, in other words, kept in a prison, uh, detainment, uh, or you are released on bail. So the vast majority of people are released on bail to await their trial, their full trial, at a later date. But you don't release people that you consider could be dangerous. This guy quite clearly uh, not only could be dangerous, was dangerous and went on to kill uh, the woman that he was accused of assaulting. Uh, and... Um, uh, the police, of course, in their time-honoured fashion, have referred themselves to the police watchdog, the IOPC. Uh, I mean, frankly, I, I don't mind the police watchdog, fine, but it's like a ritual. As soon as the police screw up, uh, they go, we've refer referred ourselves to the police watchdog. So if you ask them any questions about it, they go, no, 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 it's being investigated by the police watchdog. It's a way of kicking the can down the road. That said, it's not just down to the police, this. This is down, I think, we'll be looking at this story later on, on Crosstalk. Um, uh, it's a case of our justice system being absolutely packed. So judges are under immense pressure to release people on bail mm -hmm. rather than clog up our prisons. Yeah, well, I mean, I, my, my view of this is... If you're over here on a student visa and you've been arrested for a pretty serious crime, that's enough, my friend. You're well, gone. You've got to be found guilty of it. Well, they, they could be not guilty. Clearly, I'd imagine no, the rap be, sheet was significant just, enough that no, this no, guy no. remained yeah, but that, You don't know he was guilty. You've got, he's got to be found guilty in the... Oh, he's, well, they found him. Oh, they got him. They've <laughs> just, just been arrested. Oh, there we go. Uh, so he's been arrested. We'll have more, more, of that. more of that later. That is at least a relief. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, let's move on. Uh, now, it's Angela Rayner still. Labour diehards are insisting uh, that Angela Two Homes Rayner is the victim of sexism and also, of course, she's the victim of prejudice towards uh, working-class northern class women, sexism, according to... Nothing to do with it. Picurism. Nothing whatsoever to do with it. No. Did she or did she not 
illegally try to evade capital gains tax when she sold a house that she bought on Margaret Thatcher's right to buy council house scheme. Did she uh, lie and say that she was living there during that time uh, when in fact she was living right. with her partner and kids? Uh, yeah. Or did she not? And uh, Labour, I've got, there's a poll in the Daily Mail saying two thirds of the British people want answers. We want the truth. And when you ask Keir Starmer, what do you think about uh, Angela Rayner, your deputy who stands accused of evading uh, uh, capital gains tax? And she says that she did nothing wrong because she's got this letter. From, an, you know, from a tax expert saying that uh, she didn't have to, uh, that she didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so what we're saying is show us the letter. And uh, when you ask Keir Starmer, have you seen this letter? Have you seen her evidence? Yeah. He says no. What? Oh, yeah, what? there you go. The former, the former Attorney General knowing everything there is to know about his former PCC. Shadow Attorney yeah, General. Did, well, yeah, he and was, uh, um, head of the... Crown Prosecution yeah, Service. Yeah, there you go. He really doesn't care that much about investigation. Well, anymore, no, he, does he? What, he's, what he's doing is ensuring. Yeah, he's ensuring in, in, in the he world can wash of his hands of it. That he's yeah. got plausible but, deniability. You know, what, annoys plausible me about, deni what annoys so, me about this is they will go after the left, will go after anyone on the right wing. What did you know about Chris Pincher? Were you covering up the things that you knew? What did you know about. Uh, cake in COVID parties. What did you, you're a liar, you said this, you know, anything, you're scum, you lie, you've got no integrity, you're all the same. And then she's told a bit of a whopper, it seems, although she denies it, and all of a sudden that's sexism. Yeah. No, it's not. It's nothing to do with that. It's nothing to do whether she's a northern working class lady, whether she's a woman or anything. It's whether or not she broke the law. And if she broke the law, her position as the potential future Deputy Prime Minister of this great nation is in big doubt. It's as simple as that. And uh, Starmer seems to think this is going to blow over. Hey, Keir, it's not. It's not. You have to clear up this murky situation. You really do. And perhaps a bit of honesty, a bit of transparency on the part of Ms. Rayner might help. Uh, and what do you get transparency from? You get it from lots and lots of sunlight. Where there oh, wasn't I'm much right, of it. There segue. wasn't much sunlight in North America. There was not. Yesterday. There was a total, total eclipse. Total eclipse of the sun. Let's have a look at... Uh, uh, we've got some uh, f footage of uh, loads, thousands, millions of Americans, I think, Lucky across things. that I continent. Lucky things. I love a good eclipse. A absolutely like astonished and amazed and transfixed mm. by this extraordinary phenomenon. Uh, so uh, can we please play uh, Stop Getting Rid of the Two Homes, Rainer, and maybe think about the total solar eclipse. Uh, can we uh, have a look at some of what happened? Look at that, look at that, amazing. It is so amazing. cool. It's so sort of like otherworldly, isn't it? So apparently at Dallas Zoo, giraffes, zebras and ostriches shrieked and squawked and ran for cover as the skies grew darker. Poor wee things. Well, they should have given them those glasses so they could see them. Well, yeah, the animals. It does apparently freak animals out. <laughs> Uh, it also is thought to uh, cause kind of physical illness amongst people, although there's no actual yeah. proof about that. Uh, but it, swe it swept through Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, Ohio, New York City uh, and Maine, uh, New England, all the way across the country. Here they are looking at Amazing. New York. Where were you for the one that we had in Europe in the late 90s? I was... Uh, were you in America? No, Did I you wasn't. No, one? no, it was... I think it was just right at the turn of the century. And I was it in, was. It's I was in late Can 90s, wasn't Canary it? Canary Wharf working yeah. uh, for former good paper, The Daily Mirror. No longer, I'm afraid, but there you go. Uh, you know, I remember we had gone on a family trip to France and we had happened to be in Paris and we happened to on that day be going up the Eiffel Tower and we happened, luck would have it, to be at the very top of the Eiffel Tower. What a cool place. Uh, that is a great... Trips. I know. That's amazing. It's a big old memory, that. that was good memories. Indeed. Uh, now, uh, if you're worried about uh, missing it, uh, if you're in Britain, don't worry. The next one, uh, Total Eclipse of the Sun, will be in 2090. So stick around, it's going to happen. <laughs> but if you're in America, the last one was 2021, and the next one is only two years' time. So well, there you go. If, if you're you British, one, go to America. If you want to see the next one, you have to fly the Atlantic. There you are. So uh, there you go. Quite now, do you know event. who could afford to do that? Yeah. Go on, go on. Oh, Here we go. Another brilliant <laughs> thing. <laughs> Council uh, Fat Cats, council fat cats can afford to do that, can't they? Because it turns out there's a record number of town hall bigwigs pocketing more than £150,000 a year. In fact, the total for 2023 has risen by 108 staff in a year. I think it's something like 3,000-odd people now, isn't it, across councils in the UK, across 829 councils, getting that big old paycheck. Now, I would say that in defence of some of these people, some of them, that, you know, if you're being, if you're the CFO and running all the 
the finances for a big sort of unitary authority. That's quite a serious job. Well, You've got more, to be good at what you do. More difficult than running the country. Because well, no, not what Because, for example, yeah, the woman who, the run, who runs... No, the, not just more than the Prime Minister. Mm. The woman who runs Hampshire... Uh, county Council uh, earns something like £660,000 no. a year. That is, I really? think, on my useless maths calculation, about five times more than the Prime Minister. It That's cannot true. be harder <laughs> to run Hampshire than it is to run the country. These people are taking us for a ride. Yeah, Meanwhile, council tax goes up and up and up. Oh. And what do they do with our council tax? Get broke. They divide it between themselves. Yeah. They don't fix potholes. Do well, they? yeah, all these authorities are, oh, austerity, we've got no money. Meanwhile, we need to be paid gazillions of pounds. Honestly, mm. honestly, we've been taken by a ride for, for a ride by these people. It's we the golden handshakes as well. People left with golden handshakes of more than £400,000. So you get money to then not do your job. Yeah. Golden handshakes are a joke, aren't they, frankly? Especially in the public sector. <laughs> yeah, 400 grand, one. I'll take one. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. These people are wasting our money, our council tax, and that is a disgrace. And they're dividing it being between themselves. And that is an absolute scandal. And we will be looking at this later on on Crosstalk. Uh, now, uh, you'll like this one. Uh, <laughs> well, you take it up. The Muslim my... vote campaign. So, I've been talking a while about the sectarian politics. It's creeping in to UK democracy. We saw that happen with Galloway in Watchdale, didn't we, the Workers' Party? But there's this organisation that's uh, appeared, it actually appeared in 2019, called the Muslim Vote, and it still sort of tries to organise a community to vote as a bloc so they get Muslim representatives in Parliament to reflect what they want to happen in this country, something that I think is a pretty dangerous route for any religion to do this. I just don't like sectarian politics. It always turns out bad. Um, but now it turns out, and I've heard this before from people in the intelligence sector and counter-extremists, that the Muslim vote might have connections to some pretty shady organisations with some pretty shady points of view. Don't take it from me. Take it from Michael Gove when he revealed last month the organisations that uh, need to be taken a closer look at under the government's definition of extremism. The community secretary actually told MPs back on March the 14th that he had concerns about the Islamist orientation of three Muslim-led organisations, the Muslim Association of Britain, MEND and CAGE. Uh, and it turns out that they have a lot to do with trying to organise the Muslim vote. And people go, oh, well, it's not going to happen, it doesn't matter. I believe, and it's been sort of reported, that given the size of communities in certain populations, I think they're targeting 90-odd seats. But 35, genuinely, the result could be significantly altered by the Muslim vote. So this is not a laughing matter. Where does this end? I don't know. Are we going to have the Christian vote, the Sikh vote, the Hindu vote, the Jewish yeah, the vote? That, it's not a good idea. Democracy should be for all people and not carve us up into little religious voting blocks. However, however the, I mean, the, the problem is these three organisations are being investigated for being technically extremist, at which point uh, they will have to be extracted from the occasion, uh, the equation and made illegal. Uh, I'm just wondering at what point uh, this is just, I'm just thinking aloud. Uh, even thinking for, uh, is rare for me, but now I'm thinking aloud. Uh, Careful. Uh, I mean, Who knows what's going to come out? Well, you know, democracy is about trying to get your candidates uh, right. into position and then get them voted. So, uh, I mean, in the end, is Mus what Muslim vote uh, generally what they're doing. Is it wrong? Is it illegal? Well, yeah, it's, it's not, not necessarily it? wrong, democracy. but what I would say is this. It, it, it introduces sectarian politics. How well, much, you're allowed to do that. How, what with your tax cuts and stuff is non-dependent upon whether you're a Christian or a Sikh or a Hindu or a Muslim, is it? How the NHS works yeah, doesn't matter what religion you have. State is separate from religion. It is in this country and it needs to be. Our politics is free from all this. When you look at countries who have sectarian voting yeah. blocks, and we saw all the troubles this caused it's not in against Northern the law, Ireland. Is it? It's not against the law, so, but it is ominous. Well, it's, That's be, yeah, what I would yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I totally sympathise with what you're saying, but um, mostly these organisations, they're not breaking the law, so they're, no, no, they're no, fiddling no, with democracy and we should be very careful. Yeah. Uh, agreed with that. Now, uh, up in Scotland, uh, this is what this uh, all comes down to, isn't it? Uh, a, uh, now, I'm not... Uh, we, yesterday, we focused in on somebody who had posted on social media a kind of conflation of the star, the Israeli star of David and a Nazi swastika, which somebody reported to the police... There it is. Uh, reported to the police up in Scotland under the new hate laws as breaking the hate laws. Uh, now, uh, it turns out uh, that uh, the person who shopped 
the uh, poster of this rather disgusting conflation of the Nazi swastika and the Israeli flag uh, was a Scottish National Party member called Tom Arthur Senior. Uh, guess who shocked him? His son, Tom Arthur. Now, I don't condone what Tom Arthur Senior did as well, but when you're in a position when you, you've got the children shopping their parents, that's Maoist China. That's what happened in, in China. And, uh, you know, I don't know what road Hamza Yousaf <laughs> thinks he's <laughs> taking Scotland down, but it's a very bleak one, if you ask mm -hmm. me. Yeah, well, you know, I, I don't want to make generalisations about the left wing or the SNP, but I'm gonna, which is uh, <laughs> they pretty much have some fairly unpleasant views, don't they? They sort of clothe themselves in moral righteousness. They always want to say, we're the non-racist, we're inclusive, but you scratch beneath, beneath the surface of the far left and you very quickly find some ugly attitudes, These don't the, you? The, the Hamza Yousaf's hate laws are fascistic, uh, they're, Ma they're like Maoist China, North Korea, they are sinister. And they're the ones who do all the hating, that's what they're, I'm saying, it's mad, isn't sinister, it? sinister, uh, repressive and illiberal and uh, they must go. Uh, this is part of the United Kingdom, as I say, unbelievable. What does the uh, idiot Yousaf think he's doing? Oh. Right, uh, now, gender ideology, uh, the, the Chilean Keegan, the education Secretary uh, is expected soon to unveil, unveil her new rules on gender ideology in schools. And oh, what, yeah. he, what she's going to be saying, or what teachers will be specific in, in uh, not in Scotland, of course, but the rest of the United Kingdom, will be specifically banned from raising the issue of gender ideology Good. unless. Uh, a kid raises it. So they cannot, a teacher cannot proactively say to the class, now let's talk about changing gender. Guess and gender what, girls ideology. and boys, you're not girls and boys, you're anything yeah. you want to be. It doesn't matter what goes on down below. You just pick, why don't you? In fact, it's far better to be this way because if you happen to be a straight cis, Binary, whatever they want, whatever this is banned from this program. Cis, yeah, whatever, whatever the sort of latest lingo is. That's bad. That's evil. That probably makes you a right wing Nazi. Mm. So why don't you all get slightly confused and start questioning your gender and then become depressed as a result and go down wormholes on TikTok and be encouraged to go and take mm. puberty blockers and chop off your genitals? Because that's safeguarding, isn't it? That's what we should be well, doing. Well, to be fair, so that's what uh, Gillian Clean. Yeah, good. Is declaring that this all stops. Uh, but if a kid raises the subject, then teachers can discuss it. Uh, meanwhile, over in Italy at the Vatican, uh, oh, the Pope on, has got involved in this. Good for you, Pope Francis. He has, or the Vatican has declared, that sex change surgery and surrogate births uh, are, are grave violations of human dignity, uh, putting them on a par with abortion and euthanasia. Do you know, since the uh, Church of England seems to be going so woke under Justin Welby, I might have to become a left footer. I might have to join this lot. They seem to have better well, ideas about right what the Bible street, actually teaches and what is right or wrong, although it does go a bit further than uh, I, I would fancy. But um, I do like all the saints and stuff and the sort of uh, incense. Quite appealing. Well, uh, some of us. And the Pope Mobile. That yeah, is a cool thing. The Pope Mobile, yeah. yeah, quite yeah. Like that. Well, uh, it's the OP Mobile. But people. there you go. No, I mean, good. I'm actually glad where he's actually standing up for the religion of that country. Uh, Italy is, of course. Uh, no, of the, the world. Of the world. Of the world. Of the religion of the I world. Think Catholic, but, uh, the it's just an Italian Italy religion. And, well, no, it's, yeah, no, it's true. Um, he, at uh, least he's defending Catholicism rather than the Church of England, which seems to do its utmost uh, effort to destroy Christianity. So. Yeah, he does, it basically says that gender theory, changing sex, uh, is an assault on uh, every individual's unique dignity. That's the Catholics church's official line on it now. So it is against sex change. It is against gender ideology. Uh, make of that what you and will look, now. Rishi, Rishi Sunak has got a very strident oh, opinion yeah, on yeah, this. It's on. worth hearing. Brave Rishi, what he's had to say about allowing children to use different pronouns and change their name, says uh, it is not a neutral act. Wow! Great, well there done. You go. Now, the BBC uh, loves the, talking of taking our money and dividing it between yourself. The BBC in the past year has spent <laughs> 400,000 pounds Pounds, uh, on the school kids of their foreign correspondents. Uh, only 20, 20,000 pounds per kid uh, for correspondents to send their children to posh public schools in their foreign postings. Now, I'm not against 
the, the, you know, people getting expenses to, uh, I've done it myself, you move country, you need some help and all that. I'm not against that, but 400,000 on 20 kids to go to public school abroad, I think yeah. that's a misuse of TV licence fees. On some level, yes. I mean, I, I want to know a little bit more detail on this story, because if you're in some sort of, you know, international outpost where the education system's not in the English language, you know, an English language reporter, as you would be for the BBC, and uh, your kids therefore can't get an education, and you're not having a salary commensurate enough with being able to afford the fees of the child, then I can kind of assume I that that's OK. But you know if you looked into this, that wouldn't be the case, would it? It'd be perfectly much. good international yeah, Some help, not, not 400 grand yeah, for 20, exactly. Boys, exactly. 20 kids. That's ridiculous. Now, uh, uh, hardest geezer, Russ Cook, uh, as you probably saw yesterday, mm -hmm. completed his incredible run from the north to the south or was it the south to the north of... Uh, of uh, uh, no, south to the north. South to the north of Africa, arriving... All the way around the outside. ...in Tunisia, all, all the way around the time. Now, he says he's the first to do this. Ah. Guess what? Uh, a Danish ultra runner has come forward and says, well, well done, but uh, I did it 14 oh, years ago. Dear. So, Russ Cook... The hardest geezer, was he the first to do this or Did he was break he the record? Not? Did he set the record or has a Dane got there first? Who knows? Well, he says, you say, he, I, I think the claim was that he's the first person to do it. Yeah. But Olsen says he began his challenge on December the 28th, 2008 in Taba in mm. Egypt before a 7,948-mile journey to the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, completing uh, 434 running days before finishing in March 2010. Yeah, but, you know, our geezer did it in 352 days. So even if the Dane did do it first, our guy did it quicker. Yeah, but he's saying he did it first. Well, I know he's saying he did it first, but our guy yeah. still did it quicker. Yeah, but did he? is he telling the truth about doing it first? That's I don't know. Thing. I wasn't there. We'll be looking... Well, we're journalists. We'll have a look into that, We'll have a look into we? it. We'll let you know on uh, Costal. Yeah, we will. We are going to have a look at that. No, no, this is. I'm not taking it away from Russ, who's done an amazing thing and he raised £650,000. Yeah. But uh, we do have to look into the veracity of his claim we that do. he's the first we person must. to span that con con uh, con con continent. That's it. Uh, the continent of Africa. So uh, there you are. Well, Alex, sadly, uh, I believe that we are approaching the end of. This We're creeping case. slowly towards slowly. the finish line, having run the length of the whole half hour. We're not raising any money for charity doing this in many respects. We kind of are charity. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Do join us a bit later well, at 1 o'clock. Yeah, Julia Hartley Brewer is next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. Ooh, <laughs> there was a suggestion by some that 